Have you ever wondered how K-pop got so popular? <laughs> Especially with teen girls now. Uh, no. Yeah. yeah well. Like, maybe K-drama. I needed a teen girl to explain it to me. So we got Joanna Sedia again. So she's going to go into the origins of K-pop and then why and then how it's like been kind of manufactured to sell to like the very audience that is consuming it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I thought it was really interesting from like a teenage girl point of view. Mm -hmm. So our story begins in the 1990s when the Korean music industry underwent a very big change. It was at this point that Korean music artists started to incorporate more popular American music styles into their songs, such as jazz, rock, hip hop, electronic dance music. This spawned some of the first Korean boy bands at the time, but unfortunately their success was really only limited to Korea and they didn't really gain much traction in the West. But then in 1995, uh, this guy, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna try to pronounce his name because I'm- Lee Suman? Lee Suman? Lee Suman, I think would be the correct pronunciation. I have no idea, but SM that's- SM Entertainment. Yeah, that's the guy responsible for why K-pop looks the way it looks. He started it producing into a cold it. cut of me. But this man, he was a South Korean record producer, and mm -hmm. he'd been exposed to all the American <laughs> music trends at the time, and he- this is Let's Get Physical by um, Paula Abdul. No. Uh -huh. Yeah. Dun Dun Tainted Love. Uh -huh. We're going to party like it's 1999 and Madonna, please stop dry humping the stage. <laughs> Physics. One How the heck is a moonwalk possible? <laughs> wanted to recreate that in South Korea. So he went back home, knocked on their door, and said, hey, we need to change things up a bit. So he did. He'd really seen the power of American pop culture at the time, <laughs> which keep in mind was a whole lot of Britney oh. Spears, Backstreet Boys, and this. And all these artists Justin really Timberlake. had one thing in common. It was all teen-centered pop. So our uh, South Korean record producer here established his own entertainment company and ah. alongside other entertainment companies, went out in search of the tallest, thinnest looking dudes possible. And mm -hmm. female dudes, you can't forget them. Sound a bit like a weird criteria? Yeah. Well, it was all to appeal to the teen masses, so. Then these K-pop recruits were groomed to appeal to the global audiences, put through a set of extensive and intensive <laughs> training programs for singing, uh, I know dancing, people who of etiquette, that. and a whole other slew of things. Now, one of the first boy bands to rise from this madness was a band named Hot. Yeah! I don't remember them. You don't remember them? That was like the first K-pop band I knew about. And so Hot. they came out in... So they... It's actually H-O-T. HOT is an acronym. It stands yeah. for High Five of Teenagers. It doesn't mean anything. But um, yeah, 1996. So I was uh, like junior. 8, 10. I was, I was really young. But even I knew who they were. High school. And I think because she explained it, this was the first boy band really, like, really absorbing that Western influence of like in sync and like Backstreet mm -hmm. Boys and like that boy band sound and like... Uh, yeah, and, and, boy bands. and then manufactured in a Korean way, and so I think that's why I remember it because it was manufactured by a we like for a Western audience. I really. wonder if he was thinking, well, not just the Western, but like because they're Asian, the Chinese and Japanese people might eat it up. Yeah, because I mean, that's I remember a huge. Them. That's a bigger population than um, <laughs> the U.S. has, but um but yeah you global, were global i think it has to go global from the u.s you were saying you knew someone that went through one of those k-pop training camps yeah she the contract was crazy and every day of her life was like scheduled mm -hmm. seeing like and she, it's like army they had to hide her they, you can't have a boyfriend yeah. i think they've changed it you can't now. have a boyfriend because it ruined like the image the, yeah if the image of a you in teen a picture, idol is that they're you're available. They're, oh, yeah, you're, they're available. And so... The lure is... That's that why it's in the contract that they can't date. date uh -huh. you. And yes. so if they see you with someone, they get so upset. Especially what if, if like, you know, a K-pop drama person and them. Like, there's so much... Because even the K-drama people have, like, strict contracts. Look at this hair, man. Look at these bangs. Dude, everything. They have to, they have to be their character. <laughs> this guy looks given. like... That's another thing. This guy looks like he was too ugly, so they just put glasses on him. <laughs> They're like, oh, uh, this, this the this, one closest to you. The, no, the tall one, oh. tall one with the glasses on. Oh, the sunglasses. They're like, uh, you're good at singing and dancing, but you're kind of hard to look at. <laughs> 
All right, let's, oh, yeah. uh, let's finish this. Oh, yeah, they've got to do everything, too. Sing, dance, whatever, even if they're not doing it. Yeah, so uh, let's finish this. Hot debuted in 1996 <laughs> with the first semblances of modern K-pop, you know, with the cheerful melodies, the extremely energetic dance moves that would have probably <laughs> put like... Just Dance out of business. <laughs> Ravers. All right, well, that's the origin of K-pop. Now you know, it was, uh, it was... Dude, it was inspired Cur by Korean b boys. Yeah. Before that, they they had um, break dancing teams that were ridiculous. They still do. But well, break but dancing originally they isn't... were like in the eighties and stuff. Break and dancing they... isn't really part of K pop though. I know, but I was like, those guys are even more fun to watch than okay. K pop. But so that was like K pop one right? That was when they were like, hey, let's try doing this, and they manufactured a boy band. Uh -huh. So now there's arguably we are living in a new generation of k-pop but there is one event that really really triggered it or that that was really like the starting pistol and we all know what it is what i'll show you year is 2012 a south korean artist by oh Sai releases gangnam style which goes on to be the first gangnam YouTube style video to reach 1 billion views instantly every grade 6 class was blasting the song at their graduation and doing that stupid dance point is so okay. okay my son doesn't know how to read and he was able to find that song on mm -hmm. apple music in my i was mm -hmm. like what? Like, so I when think, he really wants to, he learns... He so from a so Korean like, person's point of view, uh, or I guess maybe Korean-American, I think mm -hmm. what we observed K-pop to be before this happened was people who are already interested in K-pop, you know, maybe they watch K-dramas or they're interested in Korean culture or they just genuinely like Korean K-pop music. Those were the people that were interested in K-pop, right? But when this video came out, when, when Psy came out with Gangnam Style, all of a sudden, K-pop became approachable for people who weren't interested in any of those things. They were just interested in like a music and a funny video. And that that instance and where it goes viral shows, I guess, well, how it's much... it's true poppiness. Right, right, how much... It's like a real pop yes, song. Yes, it's, it's now like... A, Making fun of all the a, other pop songs. <laughs> it's not a K-pop phenomenon. It's now a cultural phenomenon. Yes. And that goes to show how digestible K-pop has become. Where now it can go viral, like dude, on, BTS on YouTube. shows up on, in Staples Center. It's sold out. Yeah, that's that's all it. the time. But I'm that like, do these people but even BTS, know what these guys are saying? Because you look around, it's like it's not Korean people. Came after. I know. Isn't I know. That, so that's about what I'm saying. Now, it really, the fact that I have friends now that yeah. go to those concerts, and I'm like, yeah, how old are you? Like, that's what I'm saying. I feel like, like they're part of a new generation of K-pop, which is now for like digestible for an international audience, not really like targeted towards like. A, a particular group but now it's like everyone everyone loves k-pop yeah i feel like i'm always disappointing k-pop fans like, <laughs> oh you're korean and then they start like i'm like oh not 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 like that though sorry yeah i'm not <laughs> insane Jeez. I'm, I'm, okay. not, <laughs> I'm not america on steroids i'm just regular american <laughs> Uh, all right, let's keep, uh, let's keep going. I feel like Koreans This is regarded as the turning point of the West's infatuation with K-pop. And it shows. In 2008, the K-pop industry had a total of $16.5 million in exports to the U.S. But by 2012, the figure was $235 million. Now sh So from $16.5 million to $235 million. That's mm -hmm. like almost like 20 times more. Or, yeah, 10 times? I don't know. Somewhere in there. Uh... That's crazy. <laughs> or you could just write off Gangnam 16, Style's 10? success as a one-time thing. But after this, K-pop steadily gained traction in the West and turned into the monster it is today. So what exactly made it so successful among its target audience? I think it's no secret that there is in fact a formula to make a hit song. I mean, there's a reason why when you turn on the radio, <laughs> everybody sounds like they took too much of a swig from the Taylor Swift Kool-Aid. The approaches to tempo, harmonics, even lyrics have become increasingly similar as everybody tries to break the top 40. Now, in 2011, <laughs> researchers in Europe looked at this and said, hey, we can make an experiment out of this. So they did. The study broke down hit songs into 23 different elements. Things like cadence, song length, energy, <laughs> danceability were all <laughs> quantified. Now, with all this data, the research produced a hit potential equation. I'm gonna show you a math equation now. So if you don't wanna see that, uh, now's a good time to close your eyes. Five, four, okay, here it is. Now, each W <laughs> in this disgusting thing represents features like danceability, energy, like we've mentioned before. The form. 
So it says each W in the equation represents features of a song length, loudness, etc. Using the formula, the Bristol team was able to determine with as much as 60% accuracy if a song would make it all the way to the top five. So no wonder all of the songs sound the same. I guess like because they're trying to make them sound the same. Well, they found a formula that works, so yeah. they're going to keep using it. Yeah. That's like the Disney um, the Disney Avengers formula where they make a very Chinese-friendly movie, <laughs> and that's how it sells. <laughs> that's like 60% of it is accurate, but we're making, you know, there's a formula to it. <laughs> also predicts the success of a song maybe that's why people don't like pop music though yeah pop music i mean pop music by its definition is just popular culture music so i think there can be real like music out there that's not trying to fit that formula that makes it but yeah the manufactured and produced pop music that's like behind a big label that's just trying to like get get stuff out to sell it's Mm -hmm. gonna sound it's gonna i think people recognize that it sounds very manufactured like even she recognizes it (laughs) yeah like yeah yeah we can sense it but we still like it we'll still dance to it or whatever you know yeah because i think because it's been studied to hit those parts of the brain that like yeah, that and kind it's of music. Also supposed to be able to be played and be pleasing to a, the general population, not just a select few. Yeah, which certain other genres of music. But that's why K-pop like, does so well because they're well. She's going to get into it, but they're uh, following this formula, and let's. It's it's scary how close they are to following it. Sent. <laughs> Which kind of goes to show you how everything we consume is specifically engineered to make us want to come back for more. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's the thing. Consumerism. Okay. Consumerism. You what, and I. Uh, that's obviously what they want you to do. It doesn't work if you don't come ever come back. So you and I had this conversation. I think this past weekend about when did we? When did people stop treating people like customers and they started treating them like consumers? And the difference being, customers are people that you serve and consumers are are i guess people that you feed well i guess if you're consuming so, i i don't know what the real definition is i'm like sure there's well so i so my definition i feel like they're they're you need you are giving them something they need mm-hmm. and a customer is more like a some something they want the other way around a customer is you're helping them with something they need or you're giving them something they need. A consumer is you're you're trying to sell them something, and I think that's that's how that's the difference no, between th- okay. like how an artist would look at making art for his like fan base and his audience versus how a label would look at making art or a studio look at making a record. Do you know what I mean? Like they're treating the audiences in different ways. Like, one's a consumer where they're just trying to sell them something. One's a customer where they're actually trying to make something that, like, they themselves enjoy and that they think their audience would also enjoy. Anyways, yeah. well, let's get into the formula more because she's going to get into BTS. And- because you that that makes it seem like well, the way... The way K- Korea does it is so wholly different than the way China tries to do it, which is why China fails miserably when they try to produce shit like that. Well, but China is more they censored, though. They try so hard to do stuff like this to make K-pop bands, China pop bands, yeah. and they have but, failed no, 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 because no, no, no. they're but, constantly trying to just think and fit consumer, what you're saying. That but I think the difference... There is Chinese. They are following K- China, formulas. China pop is selling music to Chinese people, whereas K-pop is trying to sell it to a Western audience. I don't think China. China wants it exported. I know they, they want it exported, exports. but where? But China exactly has, has. But done. China has stricter censorship laws, so it's going. It's not going to be as appealing for Western audiences because it's built first for a Chinese audience. But they can he- listen to the majority of pop coming out from other countries. No, I know. So that's why it's failing in both. They're in both their their market and international markets because they censor it. K-pop isn't a censored, so they can talk about the government. They can be critical about life, or you know. Yeah, but pop, pop K-pop doesn't do that. They do. They're they're. I, mean, they're, I, I run popular into stands. Music isn't, that's not the way. Chi- the reason why China is falling. Famous. No, no, no. But I think it's their censorship. censorship no, no, no. Their censorship does does limit the music that they're I'm able to create. I'm just telling you that what you said about them 
following a formula is that that's the same thing China does. And it's not the censorship that makes them fail. No, no. I think the censorship the limits, their censorship limits and branding what... first and then, and then not even, um, developing the actual, there is band. a way that China runs, uh, that China allows businesses to run that I don't think is as flexible as Korea. And I think that's why K-pop oh, yeah, sure. and even in Japan, like you see like anime and like, uh, J-pop and J-rock do so well because I don't think they have to... I think it really is a censorship. Like, I think that's why you don't see good art come from China is because it's not allowed. There's good art that comes out of China. Says who? I mean, there's, there's really good, good art, art that, that has to come out within the parameters of their censorship, what they allow to go out. If you made if you made a song, a, a hit song that was making fun of Xi Jinping, comparing him to Winnie the Pooh, they would never let it go out, even though no, even but if there it was are, super popular. There are things that come out in China that are pretty, like... You were just saying the China pop but isn't doing no, well. What are I'm you talking about? Art, it, art. Like what? I don't know. I, I Like, I've seen art that come out that's really good. I'm, I'm not talking about popular music, k- a culture, K-pop type. But I think it's like much harder. I think it's I've much seen harder them for fail them to so hard at their bands. Like, K-pop. yeah. No, I'm not talking about art. Art. I've seen lots of good art come out of China. No, but I've I think seen lots art of good too. Books come out of China in general suffers from the censorship. Oh, like, I've you, seen lots of video only, movies come out. Yeah, of China the only that come good out movies that, are really good. that can come out of China are the ones that don't touch the censorship laws. Like, it still has to fall in exactly what those their rules. China pop could do. Exactly why they thought no, but they the could ch- do it. It's yeah, but they, that it, I it, think it's that's not the, the reason that stops the cult P- K- C pop stuff. Their books and their videos and their movies would have a much more difficult time, and yet I see really good ones come out. Like, can you name any? I'm just curious. Like, I, yes. I I've seen. I mean, not- I'll show you. I don't. I can't name them off the top of my head, but I have seen really good movies come out that have made. But you don't think the movies could be better if they didn't have such sticks? No, I'm just laws? saying. That's what All I'm just I saying. It suffers was, from the when censorship. When you said what was wrong with the formula stuff and the consumers and customers, okay. I'm so what I meant, with what I meant to say they is, they try to do that in China with the ch- yes, the they're music. trying to do it, and the reason why they're failing is because of the censorship. Like I'm saying, their art could be better if they weren't as censored. If the artists weren't as censored, this is not true art. That what they produce, in it C-pop. could be if it's their formula within, is yeah. a real. It's not trying to create real art. Either is Korea, though, but uh, like Korea's just trying, like Korea's doing the same thing. They're just trying to make stuff to sell. China's just trying to make stuff to sell. I don't know how Korea hit the hit the jackpot before China did. Maybe That's it's what I'm that they're Lee both Suman. doing the same thing, but K-pop does it well. All right, well, let's look at the the formula that K-pop follows. But how many are failing? The scientists gathered showed that danceability has become more important to audiences failed. over the past fifty years, and rhythm, on the other hand has become increasingly rudimentary, with simple binary rhythms becoming more popular. What is a simple binary rhythm? I don't know, I just put it into Sound Smart. So what does any of this have to do with K-pop, you may be wondering. Glad you didn't ask. So this is where things are gonna get a little bit confusing, so just bear with me while I explain. So if you spend a considerable amount of time on Twitter, you've probably already heard of BTS, which is arguably K-pop's biggest boy band oh at the moment. Oh my god. And I'm telling you this because- Why do they all look like women? <laughs> is this what boy bands look like now? Um, our boy bands, they looked, remember everyone said Instinct and Backstreet Boys, they're all gay or whatnot, and they're like One Direction. They uh, all looked girly too. These the, guys. A homog- what's it called? Hetero, no. What's that term when you look androgynous? It's like, I would swipe right on him. <laughs> <laughs> if, he, if he showed up on my, on my dating app. All right. Why do they all K-pop's look the same? Biggest boy I know. Is this, this is what is Are this they what, brothers? Is this what Korean people look like? <laughs> I can't. Do we look like that? Maybe we all look like that to, uh, to like other people who haven't seen a lot of Asians. I wonder how many but of I've them. I've seen a lot of Asians. I grew up around Koreans, but we didn't all look like the same. Like, maybe we we're not rich enough same. to afford nice. Maybe nice clothes make people look different. But oh, some of do them. Do you think they all got surgery to look the same? No. Some of them look like they've gotten work done. Actually, maybe they're look they're. Their lips. How? Some of them, their lips Look are pretty big. Look at their noses. Or maybe it's the hair. No, I mean, hair you can cut. Anyways, let's get going. 
And I'm telling you this because the data I'm about to show you uses BTS as kind of a representative of K-pop as a whole. So here's what happened. Spotify's internal algorithm brain took a bunch of BTS songs and <laughs> analyzed them for these musical features on the left here. Time signature, instrumental noise, tempo, valence? I don't know what valence is. Key, energy, danceability, acoustics, duration, MS, liveliness, speechiness? Hmm. And then it assigned a numerical value for each and pooped out this absolutely terrifying graph thing, monstrosity. I don't... This is the sixth time I'm filming this. Then this robot brain turned and said, hey, I don't think I've terrified people enough. So that computer brain took this data, plus did the same thing for a bunch of other Western artists and compared it in this table of values. So in other words, essentially what we're doing here is finding a quantitative way to compare K-pop to Western music. So clearly there are some outliers here. Let's discuss. So first off, speechiness. BTS smokes absolutely everybody in this. What the hell is speechiness? Anyways, yeah, they got a 0.15. No one even, Christina Aguilera got a 0.1. Wait, do they speak in English? No, I don't think so. so yeah, so I don't how... know. I'm not really sure what speechiness means. But yeah, like Those One Direction. Don't Korean. 0.04. So like, like, I guess because they cannot. Maybe they... They say less words. They're like double. So they're repeating the same word. They're double or triple, most of these people. Yes. Wow. Category, like, wow, we look at that margin. They're also noticeably higher ranking in energy, which makes sense because if you've ever found yourself watching a BTS stage performance video, uh, they're doing like Cirque du Soleil on the stage. Yeah, you that's have that? to be mad. No, that's oh, Cirque, I think that's that Cirque du Soleil. Stuff, but this is where <laughs> things get interesting. Instrumentalness and acousticness, which I think using some critical thinking, you can decipher what that means. They are noticeably lower in that category. Like they've fallen off the world map. They're screaming for help. However, this is no mistake, might I add. Remember that hit potential equation I showed you? Well, scientists found that high energy dance songs that usually lack instrumentalness tend to top the charts more often. And guess what? BTS follows those trends to a T. Bah. Wow, it's scary. I mean, getting data like this. See, pop music, no one cares what they're saying. <laughs> it's not what they say. It's, it's not particularly, um, what is it, like insightful, huh? No, it never was. I'm like, so many of this goes viral in countries. I saw so many Latinos singing K-pop, and I'm like, yeah, that's... yeah, I don't even know what that. But they it looked and sounded good because the way they say their vowels and whatever were very similar to Koreans. I was like, that's... oh my goodness, you sound like a Korean. Is that what speechiness means? Like singability or like replicability? Like you can replicate Maybe. what they're saying, and so you feel like I feel like speechiness has to be the s amount of words. No, they have more words, maybe. Because some pop songs, it's like Why don't they oh, put a rapper they literally on here? only put ten words, but they say the ten words over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Mm. That's why it's so danceable or whatever, danceability. But then, what at the lower score? I don't know. All right, I well, don't know either. I guess the, the formula works. You want to make a K-pop band, be like K-pop from America. <laughs> so K-pop from or um. BTS in particular, their largest strength is their fans or their stands. I guess a stan is someone who is like a super Didn't fan. Didn't we cover something and we saw some videos of like white people speaking Korean? Like they learned Korean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They we covered loved these guys. I was like, there oh, was like a racist I need to learn um, Korean. Twitter handle it. or a Twitter thing going around, and then a bunch of K-pop stands turned it into oh, a yeah, BTS they were thing. They're like, we're gonna boycott. Or yeah, we'll so do that's the strength. To make it. They can mobilize so quickly on the internet. K-pop people oh, or K-pop stands. I insulted a billion of them. It's okay. We're Korean. We're going to pass. <laughs> okay, let's... They're let, like, no, no, you're not. Honestly, you're not Korean. This is we why... We need to start singing Korean songs. This is why she and a lot of other people... There's a disclaimer. I, I Maybe I cut out, but she's and a lot of people are afraid to cover K-pop is because K-pop stands are very... Um, easily offended and they'll come at you okay, so in a huge let me tell brigade. You, that's not just K-pop. 
There are wars with these girls monsters. Little uh, there's no, other, no 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 no. But this is the, these girls fans went and tried to beat the shit out of these girls. Like, okay okay. But there's she's drama like you, that too. Oh, she's and gonna show you fans. a completely different scale. Oh, stands are worse than no. The K-pop stands are American just, pop fans. They're in number because that's the reason why they made this that formula. They okay, saw me, the K-pop fans. I mean, the American okay, okay. popular yeah, fans yeah, yeah, yeah. be so crazy that they so, wanted that. You're, you just said it. Okay, so K-pop stands versus like American pop culture stands. Let's let's take because a look American at the numbers. American pop culture, they'll be fainting and screaming, yeah, yeah, yeah. beating the let's crap out of each other just to get to... I'll, I'll show you. Let's take a look okay. at the numbers because we have some stats on K-pop stands. Oh. I'm going to go about this next topic Maybe in the I most respectful way one. possible. Because I feel like there's a very high potential for me to offend like the entirety of Twitter. I think it's no secret. That's what I'm saying. Oh, People Twitter. don't like covering K-pop stuff because they're afraid of offending the K-pop stands. And then That's they'll the get disclaimer. stampeded. Yeah, so I'm like, uh, maybe we'll get a pass because we're Korean. And we'll call them <laughs> stampeding. Uh, yeah, stampeding. That's a good one. Ooh. That the K-pop fan base is one of the most <gasps> intensely dedicated and loyal fan bases at the moment. The very reason why I'm making this video is because I see fan accounts all the time on Twitter and I have no idea what's going on. Like, I wake up <laughs> every day, get out of bed, go over to the toilet to do my morning business and check out who's been canceled for the day. Like, it's just a part of my routine at this point. But I digress. <laughs> Remember when believers were a thing and stood above oh, yeah, all believers. other on social media? For six years straight, beginning in 2011, Justin Bieber won the yes! Social Artist so Award crazy. at the Billboard Music Awards, which is fan vote. Okay. Remember Bieber fans? Taylor Swift and Selena than... Gomez. Every okay, so he worse. won six years in a row, starting from 2011. This It's a fan voting award. So it's not like a panel of judges. People have to vote in. From the, so yeah, he yeah. outdid like Selena Gomez, Taylor Swift, all of the big names six years in a row. Okay. From 2011 to 2017. Uh-huh. We had more and more Bieber, and it seemed like it was Isn't never going to end. <laughs> Alcohol poisoning? 2017 came running in. And Mr. Bieber's reign of terror ended abruptly when a seven-member boy oh, band from so South Korea shook things up a bit. Four years into their musical career, BTS swept in and won the top social award with okay, more they don't than look 300 like million votes. No. Okay, so remember when we were talking about K-pop stands versus American pop culture fans? The population of America is 330 million people. Mm -hmm. So he got 300, or BTS got 300 million votes. Because by votes. then you have worldwide fans. Man. Yeah, I'm telling yeah, you, yeah, 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 exactly. The amount of Latino mm -hmm. that I met that were able to sing like the so Koreans, I'm yeah. like, I mean, so easily. I was like, do you speak Korean? They're like, no, we just love. Yeah, so they easily have way more than this. This is just the amount of fans that are willing to put in time oh, yeah, to Americans, to go vote, and then all the Asian fans. Yeah, I would like even because if, how much how popular are they amongst Asians then? Mm -hmm. Because they're no longer just the you know. They look like them now. Yeah, that's what <laughs> like, I'm saying. K-pop fan stands is like on a different scale. And I think it's because of the internet. Oh, like I you can mobilize were... people so much faster with the internet. Uh, but also these, you'll see. And How could they vote in though into the, Amer is this an American award? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. How did they get 300 million votes and what countries get to vote? Like where do they? Yeah, that's a good question. How does that work? All right. Well, I don't know the answer, so let's maybe keep going. Maybe through Facebook or something. Or maybe through no, Twitter. I don't think you're hearing me. 300 million. <laughs> what did Bieber <laughs> mean by? People? Now, this is all to say that the K-pop industry has a very deep understanding of the effect that digital fluency has in the streaming age. The more data savvy and proactive your fans are, the more power they have to impact the charts. So yep. the name of the game is engagement. No, I'm not getting married. So this next information <laughs> that I'm about to show you, I gathered on a little deep dive in Twitter, so let me enlighten you. BTS has three different accounts, which helps increase engagement. So the first one, BTS Views, is dedicated to tracking the number of YouTube views they get. The second one, BTS Voting Team, is all about hashtag driven voting. The third one, BTS on Billboard. Let me read you this quote that should tell you enough. It's devoted to helping BTS Spread their wings and fly on the billboard charts. You part of the cult yet? <laughs> Dude, their online presence is managed to like make them huge. The it's crazy. It's because like, it's like, where did they learn that from? <laughs> so the minute you start even, okay, this was 
data from a while ago, and it's obviously anecdotal to the two people I know that went to these become K-pop people. Mm. But you have a whole management team. Yeah. And then, and someone, you're not doing, no, you don't even know who's doing the, the, like this remind- social media stuff yeah. but there, there's an expert at every corner and everything you do you have to ask someone and, and an expert mm-hmm. is somewhere there that tells you if you can or can't you know what it reminds me of at five or it She's reminds me of like the navy seals where oh it's pretty bad some of them have breakdowns like they can't see their family sometimes yeah like if they came from another country and they're like, nope, we're gonna start our tour. This is these are the dates. Like no, but there's like an intense like selection process and there's like training and you have a lot to of like, training. Yeah. Anyways, all right, let's keep going. Oh, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> That's not where the madness ends, however. No. Oh no. No, it's not because through some research, I found that each of these accounts has at least seven administrators each of which is posted in a different time zone so that they can cover all hours of the day. Uh. Uh, <laughs> her burps are so funny. Oh, my God. Anyways, uh, that's crazy. They So all of those accounts that manage, like, their voting team, their hashtag voting team, their billboard, um, their billboard chart, like... It's no managed place. so it can stay up 24-7 because they have seven different administrators in different time zones. That's crazy. That's what it takes now. It's a business. That's what it takes to make a brand is you need all the support. This is why I said it reminds me of like the special forces, like the Navy SEALs, because you have so much support and and uh, investment into your career and like all the support behind you to like make you a superstar. Yeah, but it's crazy. I'm like, they're, they're, they're very resourceful. They're like, what can we export? Mm-hmm. It's like what? How Cute come Korean all boys these that look Americans, like women? You know, musicians are making music. I mean, making money off of our young people. Yeah, tired of Can seeing. We Justin. make money off of everybody's young people. <laughs> I know they're like we got boys cuter than Justin Bieber and One Direction. I know we'll put a whole way, bunch of them together. Way cuter, and they'll be disciplined <clears throat> to never mess around. That's true. Otherwise, they will always be your dream boys. I know. What do they do to people in South Korea? We know what they do to them in North Korea. Oh, anyway. South Koreans just send them to North Korea. Yeah, probably. It's it's brutal in South Korea. It's <laughs> not like I even if I got a chance to be like a K-pop idol, like I don't think I would want to be just because I know the the lifestyle they have to live. It's like I want my it's, freedom. <laughs> it's as bad as like I I would think someone who's like a really good. I mean, that's Actor not saying or actress here, like someone who's always right. Like, I mean, yeah, that's not saying there aren't got a hustle. Like there aren't happy people in K-pop. I'm sure there are, but like there is a s- shocking number of like Korean celebrity suicides, and it's mm-hmm. really it's really sad. And I think it's celebrity a large... suicides in general. No, right, it's celebrity suicide in general. But I I think the Korean media industry has shown itself to not really take care of its artists. Uh, yeah, that, that's why I feel like they've, I think they've improved on their contracts and stuff with them, with the, uh, artists. With the artists. But I, before, I mean, they learned it from America. It's because <laughs> they had so many people who wanted to be, and they're like, yeah. we, and you know, it was like. It's the problem America So had. they had, so they take advantage because like, oh, you're desperate. We did. We we'll covered. We'll train you. But we own your image and your name mm-hmm. for all of the universe throughout blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we covered we the Dave... We call it the Dave Chappelle contract. We covered the boycott Dave Chappelle episode where they... Be, like, the reason why he can't... Why Dave Chappelle can't go to another network and make another Dave Chappelle show is because Comedy Central owns his. the rights and his likeness to the show. Which so is he like his name. <laughs> yeah, forever. And he doesn't get paid for it. It's insane. And so these K-pop people probably sign very similar contracts if not worse because Hopefully they had lawyers to help them well no but it's, it's like been an ongoing problem even if you have a lawyer where else can you go like the other k-pop place yeah, it's not like, like you oh, can well we'll just find somebody else to replace yeah, you because you all look alike anyway there's no other country like the u.s isn't producing k-pop music maybe they will now because it's a huge market but they don't have Someone anywhere else we'll produce something <laughs> they don't have another another like studio to go to or another record label like they, yeah, how, how does that get produced? Is it just one production company? I think that's why it's so or brutal it in Korea. Each? It's because 
There are no oh. options. Like you get oh. one chance, and then they get to treat you however they want. Oh, is it? I don't I know. Yeah, I, I, I wonder what the. I'm sure there are multiple companies, is. but it's all Korean. It's all in Korea. It's it can't like, be all SM Entertainment. It's not, but you know what I mean. It's like you get one SM. of three options, you know, <laughs> or is it? Oh, maybe I don't know. It. Yeah. Anyways, let's keep going. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I mean, there's it's more. It's ingenious, but it's also kind of crazy. So aside from all of this really effective social media marketing on their part, <laughs> there's one more thing that makes K-pop so successful. I've danced around it several times already in this video, but I have yet to hit the nail on the head, and that is the power of a teen fan base. So it's no <laughs> secret that the biggest demographic that enjoys K-pop is young teenage girls. In fact, this is no new idea. Most successful artists artists of our time have benefited from a juvenile audience. Younger people do tend to find a sense of identity or escapism in watching their favorite band perform. They're Jeez, I don't I almost wish I was a young teenage girl. I don't know if I've ever had this much fun. They look like they're having so much fun. Yeah, I never went to concerts as a young teenage girl. Hmm. Favorite band. You grew up in the time before boy bands. <laughs> wow. I was like, just, no, I mean, I'm just kidding. Michael Jackson and uh, Oh and yeah. Was, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Beatles. I mean, not that was obviously before your time, but there were big boy bands like before. Form. There's a sense of community in <clears throat> Stanning, <laughs> a term used to describe a fan who goes to great lengths to obsess over a celebrity. This definition comes from the most accurate and reliable resource on the English language, Urban Dictionary. Yeah. There are hundreds and hundreds of communities online that form on the basis of people having the same interests. Oh, like how she Thousands of individuals live vicariously through their idols, and this forms Stop a very videos. strong, albeit one-sided bond between the viewer and the artist, which in turn <laughs> causes the viewer to become increasingly devoted and protective of said artist. And you know what? We could sit here and argue about the ethics of profiting off of a young and easily manipulated fan base. Hmm. But you have to admit, it's working for them. Literally, while I was making this video, BTS performed on CNN during New Year's Eve. Where am I going with this? You know, I think the greatest thing I realized <laughs> while making this video was that I was horribly wrong about K-pop. I'll admit, K-pop is not my thing, but I've really come to appreciate just how not mediocre it is. You know, these artists clearly care so much about their craft, and that's something that I appreciate immensely, and what seems to be a culture that rewards those who scream the loudest, per se. I <laughs> I uh, just compare that to America's. But yeah, K-pop does have a really high production quality. Like, you have to... They have to practice, like, their dancing eight mm -hmm. hours a day. They have to practice their singing eight hours a day. It's like, yeah. they get, like, two hours of sleep. I just, yeah. That was years ago. I'm you sure. Know, I feel like it's still now. Do you know why? Producing you know, you just, you just, like, nailed it on the head where you said, like, you have to be perfect like with your singing with your pitch with your dancing because they train you like an olympic athlete you oh, know yeah. what i mean and okay. so and i think the reason why koreans are so good at gaming is because real life is that hard where it's like their hobby like they're so they're relieving so much stress that they're able to get like really good at it <laughs> well i don't oh, know i man. think the culture also kind of is like if you're gonna do something do it as best as you can yeah no, that's that's a huge part of it. Absolutely. And but I think that shows which makes us how go much drive ourselves crazy, if, especially if we're yeah, already perfectionists. That shows how much stress they put on each other. It's like uh -huh. you're not worth it's not worth doing unless you do it perfectly. And that's a that's a mentality I see amongst a lot of my Korean friends is that they don't they don't think something is worth pursuing unless they can be really good at it. Like number one. Oh, it's and it's like, like the... how do you learn anything then? Or how do you yeah, try yeah, new yeah. things? How do you try why can't you just but yeah it's a cultural thing where it's like yeah, it's ingrained it in us to like we have to be the best otherwise it's not worth doing that's a korean uh, thing it's hard to be uh, korean <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's you know literally okay but so that's not just a korean thing because i see the asian memes and stuff and it's like yeah 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 uh, japan you're, you're not the best then like oh you're sure. disowned i'm like quite literally i've seen that not as but i you know, like, but in mostly in, in a lot of my Asian friends, I'm just saying it's hard to be Taiwanese Korean friends. because I think it's very easy to idolize Korean people because of K-pop and K-drama and like the video and game how much we and the gamers. Everybody right. But the reality, but the reality is, is drinking it, themselves to death. Yeah. The reality is it's like there's a lot of cultural like and societal pressure to like be very good. 
at everything. Yeah. And so, yeah, maybe that's why, maybe that's why K-pop is so good. Because a lot of, like, you got to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and people want, still want to do it. Oh, I know. I mean, look how, like, it's just getting more popular. You know, the more it grows, I think the more people are going to want to do it. And I think very soon we're going to see other produ- other countries producing K-pop. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Let's go, America. Let's beat the Koreans. No, I might, honestly, my <laughs> guess would be the Philippines. We'll be the- they're very close. They're very oh. musical, and K-pop has a huge international audience. Like they have the most to grow, and there's a I lot. I have to say the Brazilians. No, but there's a ton of Korean people that go to the Philippines. I think. Because. Yeah, the I, mm-hmm. Brazilians. I feel like they can come up with pop. Their if they get their shit together, they could produce pop music that would go worldwide. It's like their dramas. Mm-hmm. Their dramas are are really good and you know what we like should K just produce dramas. it i know we should just produce it ourselves korean <laughs> dramas were w- no, really popular and uh oh yeah yeah hey if you guys want to make a korean po- a k-pop band with us let us know we'll just do it ourselves <laughs> you know what hey. we're gonna call it an a-pop a-pop what what's <laughs> oh asian in pop america <laughs> oh america <laughs> All of it. We only have rights to produce it here. We're actually, people. We're not in Korea. Let's do H pop. Human population. I mean, human. H-pop. Wait, human popular music. E pop. Earth pop. Uh, pee beam pop. Pee beam. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Uh, this episode is way too long. We got to end it. What did we smoke? I don't know. Too much. Uh, if you want to go check out Joanna Sedia, she's so funny. Uh, thank her for covering this this is like i uh, she's a teenage girl that i really respect because <laughs> like she made like, be careful her, <laughs> her own oh, wait, she's over 18 yeah 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 no 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 no. i think like out of i didn't realize i could find gen z funny and because you didn't understand it before no i think i tried very, well yeah maybe i tried really hard to understand because i try to like follow the memes and like i used to work in retail and there were a lot of i had a lot of gen z coworkers, mm-hmm. and so um I, I like to talk to them about like really like what do you want to do like you know like what are the what are the career opportunities for you and a lot of them i was in northern california so mm-hmm. a lot of them were into gaming um a lot of i was selling cameras and i was really surprised because for, so when i bought my first camera 10 years ago i wanted to get good at photography mm-hmm. or good at making videos but when young people came in the, and, and we would ask them what do you what do you want to use the camera for so we can make you a recommendation the number one thing was streaming or youtube Mm-hmm. And so to find content creators that are like new and refreshing and like making new stuff that I think is like funny, like mm-hmm. I find really encouraging because I I feel like y- the the version of YouTubers that are my age are now it's like they're making not that kind of content anymore. Now they're making a lot more produced well, content. Well, it's different when they're trying to like you said produce something that they think other people want to see compared to producing something that they just want to see and mm-hmm. then putting it out there. Yeah. Um, but also yeah so her point of view on like k-pop like i think is refreshing because i don't get it <laughs> and so yeah her explaining I know, it I know, to me i feel bad asking because well i've looked into it and tried to understand i just feel like it's i thought it was just like the bieber fans i never understood that i, know, I feel I like never i never understood any of the crazy fan bases that yeah. would like they would dox so you know some one over a twitter because they insulted that's because their you were already idol. when you were born you were born 20 years old so you <laughs> completely stupid. skipped your teenage years um <laughs> i know that's yeah well it's a huge phenomenon and it's growing and bts is just getting bigger <laughs> that's like what how <laughs> it surprises me even all right yeah now i'm curious i've never heard a song from bts <laughs> Oh, well, no, maybe I have because I was in, like, Korean markets and stuff. Do they play music in there? I don't think they play K-pop. I don't know. Uh, uh, It's like that subreddit, Never Broke a Bone. You should should make one called Never Listen to a BTS Song (laughs) and see how long you can go without hearing a BTS song. But you know what? I bet even if you heard one, you wouldn't know it's BTS because you have no idea what they sound like. Exactly. You would just be like, oh, it's a Korean pop song. It's just a Korean, yeah, pop song. Oh, see, that would insult so many people. Uh, no. So many of my friends were like, oh, do you want to go to this concert? And I was like, what? Who's that? And they'd be like, oh. No, honestly, I appreciate if people are fans of K-pop because it's like, oh, you really, like, you're you're interested in, like, other types of music. 
and that's uh yeah it's like it's flattering almost oh i mean it's fine i don't mind them but don't assume i am i don't think they do though i I don't i I think once you say like oh i don't know who that is they're like all right (laughs) once they figure out how how not korean you are they know (laughs) i know but they're just shocked which is like wow yeah it's like your country is so small aren't you all fans (laughs) your country is so small i'm like there's some of us that have been here for generations like my parents don't know any of these of course not our parents too old but (laughs) they you know they came in their 20s some people came in their teens yeah that's way before korea existed i mean not (laughs) korea (laughs) k-pop oh yeah before it even existed all right oh shoot okay it's time to go huh? all right well let's see 1996 <laughs> k-pop turns 24 this year happy f- birthday 24 happy wow. birthday to k-pop 24 years old already taking over the world all right well um if i was a teen mom i'm old enough to be your mom, You're a teen mom. well all right <laughs> uh all right i don't know what it's about because i gave birth to it Go check out our merch store if you want to see uh, the products that we gave birth to. <laughs> and uh, go check out this Atch Catcher. It works I raise really them myself. well. All right. Uh, and if you don't have buds, we're your buds. Let us know if you like uh, this kind of content uh, or if you like us covering Joanne. Because she has a lot of... Or Joanna. She has a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> All right. Bye. If you like the video, keep leave a like and subscribe. Huh? <laughs>